So a while ago, in some of my shark videos, I said sharks aren't monsters. I thought most people were already on board with this. It seems a lot more information on sharks is out there these days, but I was sort of surprised by how much pushback I got on this one statement. A lot of comments dive into more, I guess, specifics, and I think I would like to dive into this topic by responding to these comments a little more directly rather than making broad statements. I've only taken a handful of all the comments, and I'm going to try and group them into a few categories. Now, I'm going to read the comments so I can respond to direct points, but I won't show any usernames because I want to address the point rather than call anyone out. Even though I disagree with the comments, I do of course appreciate your comments and feedback. So first I want to read some comments that I found that seem kind of odd and peculiar. So first, people who feel like they have to make the statement sharks are not monsters are the same people that would probably advocate vampires if they actually existed. Guys, vampires are not monsters. They are just trying to feed. It's your fault for hanging out alone after dark. The night belongs to vampires. Stay out of their night. What on earth? It's hard to make a comparison between living animals and an imaginary creature, especially when there are a variety of different vampire myths. I mean, if it was some modern vampires like the Cullens in Twilight, they don't harm humans, I think, so in that case, I guess they are not monsters, and I would defend them. But I personally prefer the more traditional vampires like Dracula, and if Dracula was a real guy, not Vlad the Impaler, like the book Dracula, I would not defend him or vampires like him. If you are a vampire that targets and plots against people, and tricks them, and plots to kill them, yeah, I think that's a monster. Never heard of a shark tricking people to come to their castle to feast on them, or plot to kill them, or leaving their home to go and find humans. I don't know, this is a weird statement. Maybe we should ask shark scientists if they would defend vampires, and see what they say. Next comment. Sharks are quite literally monsters. Just because some dumb in a dive suit and a fake degree says they are just misunderstood water puppies, duh, does not change that. If I tell you a door is actually a fillet of cod followed by trust me bro I have a degree in doorism, you still know it's an effing door. What an odd comparison. Who's the dumbass in a dive suit with a fake degree? Are they referring to someone in particular or are they just talking about marine biologists and shark specialists in general? And what fake degrees are people getting? It seems you need to get a degree in zoology, marine biology, biology, marine sciences, ecology, or animal behavior just to start. On sharksider.com, it is recommended that you also need a master's at least, and then a PhD. And then being a shark scientist can involve swimming with, recording, photographing, tagging, and observing sharks as well as collecting and analyzing data. Some shark specialists have been doing this for decades. So surely people like that would have a lot of knowledge on sharks. Hardly just a dumbass in a dive suit. And I haven't heard any shark scientists say that they are misunderstood puppies. Okay, let's move on to some other comments with some shark facts. So, this person starts by quoting me. Sharks aren't really monsters, but whatever. Meanwhile, at least 10 people a year die from unprovoked shark attacks. And I'm sure all the other sea creatures on which these sharks dine on would beg to differ. So what's a monster then? Let me guess. They actually don't exist, and you're just a Karen. Well, first, I'd like to speak to the manager. Secondly, we're going to dive a little more into the definitions in a bit, but first I just want to look at the unprovoked attacks. According to the International Shark Attack file, the five-year annual global average is six unprovoked fatalities per year. Now that is a low number, but it still is terrible that people are killed. It's also pretty bad to get attacked even if you survive. I do think it is important to realize these numbers, low as they are, are real people. Even survivors can have long-lasting physical and mental injuries and expensive medical bills. Now with that said, would that mean that all of the millions of sharks in the ocean are monsters? Well let me ask you this, are dogs monsters? Most dogs don't attack people, but between 30 to 50 people are killed by dogs each year in the US alone. Should we make a broad statement like, dogs are monsters because a small number kill people? People say things like, if you don't think sharks are monsters, See how you feel when you're being attacked by one. I could say the same thing about dogs. And for any smart ass in the comments who's typing, Oh see, you are saying there are puppies. No I'm not. There is a big difference between a wild and domesticated animal. I'm just saying if killing a few humans each year is the qualifier to be a monster, then a lot of animals are monsters. Cows kill nearly 20 people a year. Next comment. Sharks are the very definition of monsters. They literally swim around looking for things to kill all day every day 
completely cold, emotionless killers that can be the size of a school bus. I don't know what you think a monster is. Let's take this piece by piece. So the first part, literally swim around looking for things to kill all day, every day. Well, that's just not true. I mean, sharks do need to rest sometimes. It's not entirely clear if sharks really sleep, at least in the same way humans do, but many species do enter periods of deep rests where they are still on the seafloor. Other sharks cuddle up in places like caves where it's safe to rest for a while, and even a great white, an obligate ram ventilator, so sharks that have to keep swimming to survive, have been observed facing into currents with their mouths open and letting water flow in over their gills. Actually, one great white has been filmed near the ocean floor swimming slowly with an open mouth, enabling her to keep oxygen-rich water moving over her gills while she rests. Next, completely cold, emotionless killers. Actually, some species of sharks are warm-blooded. JK, I know what they actually mean. Now, are sharks really completely emotionless? Well, according to the Aquatic Animal Camp, sharks can feel and experience a wide range of emotions. Scientists observed the behavior of sharks in captivity and found that they could feel fear, stress, happiness, etc. According to Dr. G.A. Bradshaw, a specialist in animal behavior, white sharks, coyotes, and wolves not only have comparable mental and emotional capacities as humans, they are equally vulnerable to psychological trauma. And final point, that can be the size of a school bus. The only known living shark the size of a school bus is a whale shark. Surely they don't think the filter feeding whale shark is a monster. Many people go swimming with whale sharks and there are no recorded attacks. By the way, I am so sick of the whale shark isn't a shark, it's a fish comments. Firstly, all sharks are fish and whale sharks are in the order Arectalobiformes, carpet sharks. They are sharks. Next comment. Sharks aren't really monsters, uh, but they are. You go swimming with one and see how long you live. There are many shark diving tours all over the world that many people go on and live, so... Next comment. Jesus Christ, I am so tired of people making excuses for sharks, lol. The numbers, the numbers, blah blah blah. Humans don't live in the water. That's why attacks are rare. Predators eat what they can catch, period. Stop with the bleeding heart BS. No one is making excuses for polar bears when they target, kill, and eat people. I don't know why you think the facts and data or the numbers is just blah blah. How else do we evaluate the risk? How can we try and make objective observations without using data? Yeah, humans don't live in the water, but a lot of them go into the water. In 2010, it was estimated that nearly 60 million people would swim in coastal areas, even in shark attack hotspots like Volusia County in Florida sometimes called the shark bite capital of the world, a lot of people go into the water and the average number of attacks between 2012 to 2021 was 9.4. And thankfully no deaths from attacks during that period. Now considering Daytona Beach, which is in Volusia County, gets about 9 million visitors a year, nearly 10 million in 2021, I imagine a lot of people go into the water there. Of course, not all 10 million went into the ocean. I can't get precise numbers on that, but even a fraction of 10 million is a lot of people. In May of 2023, nearly 300 people had to be rescued in Volusia County in a single weekend. What did they have to be rescued from? Well, agency officials said rip currents were the main cause behind the rescues. The thing about Florida in general is that it has a variety of sharks found around the coast, including the big three, the tiger, the bull, and to a lesser extent, great whites. These sharks also migrate over vast distances. A bull shark was tracked migrating from the Seychelles across open ocean to southeast Madagascar, approximately 2,000 kilometers away, and back again. Tigers have been recorded making 7,500 kilometer round trip journeys every year. White sharks have been recorded moving 11,000 kilometers. I'm just saying, if these sharks really wanted to target humans, I'm sure they could. People don't live in the water, but a lot of people enter the water every year. And again, there are shark tours people can do, diving tours where you can swim with tigers and bulls. If they targeted and tried to eat all the humans they could, these tours wouldn't be able to operate. They would constantly be getting sued. I don't think any tour group will let you get into the water with whites unless you're in a cage, which definitely makes it sound like there is an element of danger, which there of course is. They are wild animals, they can be unpredictable, and as big as they can get, it's not worth the risk. That said, for all those typing, oh yeah, it's not a monster, that's why you need to be in a steel cage to see one. 
We have a lot of videos nowadays of white sharks swimming close to people in the water and not being interested in attacking them. There are underwater GoPro videos and there are a lot of drone videos. The Malibu artist has a ton of videos with great whites swimming close to people and, to quote the man himself, like I've seen over and over, once the sharks see they are humans, it retreats. That doesn't mean there isn't an element of danger. If you see a white shark, bull shark, or a tiger, or any substantial sized shark in the water, and you're not on a special tour, you should probably immediately leave the water calmly and alert others around you that there is a shark there. And if there are warnings not to go swimming in a certain area due to large sharks being there, I think you should take the advice and not swim there. No need to take a risk. I just don't know what people want. The numbers and data won't do, apparently, but we have so much objective evidence that disproves statements like, as soon as the shark has the chance, or the attacks are low only because people aren't in the water with sharks. You can literally watch multiple videos of great white sharks swimming up to people and then swimming away. I spent a long time on that, so let's move on to another comment. And I guess I should address the idea that this could be a somewhat semantic argument. Let me read you this comment. Great white sharks are monsters. While they don't always attack people, they are very deadly when they do. I mean, fair enough, I guess. I guess it does come down to how you define a monster. If your definition is a creature that is capable of causing harm or being a potential threat, regardless of the probability of that threat, then I see what you're saying. Please understand though, many comments are not saying that, but that they are hungry for humans to target and eat. Anyway, next comment. Sharks are not monsters? Sailors of the USS Indiana disagree. I think they mean the USS Indianapolis, which was a US heavy cruiser that sank during World War II. It was the story Quint told in Jaws. I went into it in more detail in my Response to Water Monsters lists, and Shark Bites made a full video on the topic. To summarize, many definitely were killed by sharks. All the blood and noise caused by the ship sinking seemed to attract oceanic white tips, and perhaps a few tigers too. That said though, it is hard to get an estimate on how many men died from shark attacks, as it seems most died from injury, exposure, dehydration, or drowning. Attacks from oceanic white tips are rare today. Again, Cat Island in the Bahamas runs diving tours where people can swim with oceanic white tips. Now, if you went on one of these tours, I'd imagine they'd explain that you have to be cautious around these animals. But again, if they attacked every human they saw, these tours wouldn't be possible. Let's move on to the next comment. I'm going to put a couple together as they are similar in ways. They are monsters. They attack and eat humans. They are feared and fierce ASF. I love sharks, but I'm not in denial like everyone else who loves them. I actually respect them, unlike y'all who think they are teddy bears. And sharks aren't monsters. They're highly aggressive killing machines, and when they're hungry or you're invading their territory, they will kill you. Why do sharks have to be your friends? Why can't you just accept them as they are? So firstly, there is something that I want to say to these and to most sharks are monsters comments. Which sharks? The vast majority of the time, people do not say what species of shark. There are 520 known species of sharks. Are they all monsters? According to the ISAF, any shark about 6 foot or more, so about 1.8 meters, is a potential threat. Well, half of the known species of sharks are less than a meter long, so that rules them out, I guess. Now, I assume these people mean the big three, but I think it's a bit annoying not to be specific, especially if they are alleged shark lovers. These statements seem a little reductive to me. Like, even if we ignore little sharks, the comments aren't accurate to all big sharks. Do basking sharks attack and kill people? Will a basking shark attack and kill me if it's hungry? Or if I'm invading its territory? But the really annoying part, y'all who think they are teddy bears and why do sharks have to be your friends? I do not think sharks are teddy bears or that they have to be my friends. I don't get why everything has to be black and white, and so binary. Why does it have to be sharks are either monsters or teddy bears? Can't we say they are wild animals that need to be respected? They might not plot and target humans, but large predatory sharks can be dangerous and we should take precautions. For example, don't get into the water with a great white unless you're in a cage. I just think that trying to learn and understand that these creatures are wild animals is more productive than calling them monsters, or teddy bears for that matter. Now you might be wondering why I'm so caught up on this, but let me read you one more comment. I don't understand how you can say sharks are not monsters. Only reason they don't eat people regularly is they don't have access to people so much. As soon as they have access, they attack.
How can you defend them? I can't wait for them to go extinct. A few years ago, AVNJ made a video, Sharks Are Not Monsters, and his whole thing was you have to educate people and let them know shark attacks are very rare. And I remember watching it and thinking, ah yeah, but almost everyone knows this now. Let's move on and talk about not eating shark fin soup or not buying products with squalene or other shark products in them. But no, it seems like we aren't at that step yet. And I just don't really know what people need. People who dedicate their lives to studying sharks say attacks are rare. All the data, the blah blah numbers, say they are rare. Just logically looking at how many people are in the water versus attack shows attacks are rare. You can watch videos of people and sharks close together without attacks happening. It's difficult to get people to care about an animal if they see it as a monstrous killing machine that wants to kill them. Sharks are in trouble. About 70 to 100 million sharks are killed every year by us. According to a paper published in Nature, since 1970, the global abundance of oceanic sharks and rays has declined by 71%. Almost two-thirds of sharks and rays are endangered. So, if you really love sharks, Please don't spread misinformation, and if you see misinformation about sharks somewhere, please correct it. Politely, of course, no need to be rude or anything. On top of that, please don't eat shark fin soup, and if a product contains squalene, make sure it didn't come from a shark. And the same thing goes for shagreen. To help sharks out a bit, I'm going to give all the profits of whatever ad revenue I get from this video from now until the next payment in mid-August to the charity Team Bite Back. They campaigned to stop the sale of things like shark fin soup and encourage the accurate reporting of sharks in the media. I'll put a link below if you'd like to donate. I'll also put a link to Shark Trust where you can buy some cool shark swag and the proceeds also go to shark conservation. If you can share this video around, I'd appreciate it to help raise awareness. And if you don't want to share my video, I'm going to link some shark scientist and marine biologist videos that could be worth sharing instead. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.